Hello everybody, welcome to another update on the stock screener. Today we are going to talk about Verde Agritech because they had Q2 earnings. So it had run up very well here and is probably going to keep on rising because these earnings were expected. So they hit their estimates. So let's go over the financials. So here are the revenue numbers. They had 202,000 tons, which is slightly higher than estimate. EBITDA was lower than estimate. That's because of the higher fuel prices. So I have been saying these fuel prices are very important to watch because they can increase the costs of Verde a lot. It's about 60% or so of the cost. So it's a pretty high amount. So we need to watch those fuel costs. And I have the chart here of gasoline. Plant two is still uh, expected to be on time in August and then in Q4. So nothing changed there. Here you can see the estimates and here is the achieved earnings. So earnings were a bit lower than the guidance. EBITDA a bit lower, revenue was higher. So you can see that the margins were not that good as estimates. And we will look into that in my Excel. Here you can see that, yeah, that there was an increase in diesel prices. So yeah, need to watch that. Guidance is still the same, 2 million tons for next year. And here are the numbers on the earnings. As you can see here, EBITDA has already included the freight expenses and GNA. And when we go from EBITDA to net earnings, this is about less than 20% off. So if we go from EBITDA to net earnings, we just multiply by 80%. That's how I calculate the net earnings. Some external factors that we already know. This is important. So they sold the product at $123 per ton CAD. That's about 600 US dollars per ton KCL equivalent. So there's still some upside here because the price of potash was above 1000 and here they only sold at 700, 6, 700. So that's a pretty big discount of 30 to 40%. So I expect that going forward, this price should go higher. That's the selling price. There's still upside on the sales price. They have been selling uh, a lot of forward sales, so they should go higher in the coming releases. Yeah, production costs were up. And that's about it. So let's go to our earnings. So cost per ton, that's the most important thing that I want to talk about. So the estimate was $260 per ton, KCL equivalent, and that has now risen to 330 ton. So that's a 25% increase in the estimate. So that's not good, but at 
and I will just use this $330 per ton in my calculations now. So I will need to up my costs. Sales price went up by 20%. Um, but still, there is a lot of re-rating potential for the coming quarters. They are on track for construction for Plan 2. No problems there. Also, we had confirmation that my formula works. Production times price minus costs divided by 6 times 80%. So that's confirmation there. Um, PE ratio is now 11. Okay, so currently we have a PE ratio of 11. Yahoo says 50 PE ratio, that should come down. Okay, so this is actually a very good price to buy, but it's going to improve next year because we have more production and prices are higher. So the PE is going to go to around two for next year. If, of course, the potash price stays at this level. These are the earnings. You can see there is growth and more to come. There's a healthy net margin. Okay, so revenue is at 20 million and net earnings are about half of it, 40%. So we have a very healthy margin. Last quarter, the margin was smaller. Now we have a much larger margin, which is very good. So this company will never go bankrupt. We have good margins. Um, on this valuation chart, I use $330 per ton on costs. And you can see nothing has changed. So it's basically the same on my valuation chart. We are still going to go to 1 billion by next year. If the potash price stays the same, of course. Now let's get into detail here. I added 330 instead of 320. So it was a bit higher than I expected. It had no influence on my valuation chart. Then let's go to the costs side. Here is my cost calculation. So in Q2 we had Twenty four point eight million revenue in CID, ten million EBITDA, and production was two hundred and two thousand. So that gives me a cost in CID of four hundred eighteen dollars per ton, and that is converted into dollars. And that's $330 per ton costs. Okay. That's higher than the estimate. So what was the estimate? I will show you. So keep in mind 330. So let's use the estimate numbers. So we had 22.9. 229 2 EBITDA was 11.8 and production was 200,000. So the costs were $260 per ton. Okay? It was here, 260 and from 260 it went to 330 so there's a huge increase in costs per ton about 50 no 40 plus 40 plus 30 70 dollars per ton increase 70 dollars per ton kcl equivalent so that's a pretty high increase in costs due to the uh, diesel price. But of course, 
and the potash price has gone up more than that. So that's good. But it has to be said that the costs have gone up. And I have uh, added that in my calculation here. 330. I've also upped the 2023 number a bit. Still expect it to come down a bit. But you can see nothing changes uh, overall. It's still huge upside for the future. So this is something to watch. The gasoline price has gone up, but it has also gone back down now. So I'm hoping this will stabilize at this point and hoping that the soybean price goes up faster because that's the revenue that's coming in. And you can see that soybeans are doing very well. It's actually at an all-time high and probably shooting even higher. Wheat, yeah, wheat is something that Brazil doesn't produce. So let's go to corn. Corn is also very high and it's bottoming out here. Then we have coffee. So all of these commodities need to go higher and that will support the potash price. This is also very good. Coffee is at very high levels and I expect food to go higher in the future. So that was the update. I think Verde is doing very well. Um, costs need to be looked at and everything is on track uh, to, uh, to come to fruition. And the plant is getting built and we haven't even added biorevolution to these numbers yet. So more to come and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.